Exclusive tour, this is an exclusive tour today for the car. Uh, sorry, domestic departure. Okay, I'm not going National magic. Emia, Emia, Emia. All right, I'm going to change. I'm going to see. I'm going to see. Aha, aye, Kumasi International Airport. Nana, Ajima Prempe, the first the airport. You know, aha. And uh, I want to show you the show. Me, me, you know, I'm brain. to Wembley to watch the match between Real Madrid and Dortmund. I will fly. And I'm flying with a board member of the Ghana Airport Company, the legendary Kwabna Ajapon. Kwabna Ayabua. Oluwa! Kwabna, are you here? Thank you so much. Meanwhile, the entire board members of the Ghana, the management of the Ghana Airport Company, they are all here under the chairmanship of Mr. Paul Adam Ochre. So a board, uh, the management members are all here. Mr. Kwabna Jekete Nyako, Madam Philomena Sam, Mr. Kwabna Yabua Ulua, Mr. Kojo Eju Danso, Air Commodore 
Jervis Winner is also here. Mr. Nathaniel Amodo Wilson is also here. And of course, Mr. Tay Ajeriko is also here. As I indeed acknowledge your presence of Honorable Kwame Ose Prempe, MD for Goyal. I'll be flying from here to Wembley through the Heathrow Airport and it is appropriate to invite the British High Commissioner, Her Excellency Harris, to give us a few remarks. Put your hands together for the British High Commissioner. President of the Republic of Ghana, His Royal Majesty Otumfu Asetu II, the second Asante Hene, Honorable Kweku Ofori Asiyama, Minister for Transport, the Honorable Prime Minister and First Lady of Trinidad and Tobago, all dignitaries, Nana Nom, uh, all protocols observed, please allow me to stand on existing protocols and thank you for the invitation to join you here today. It's an absolute privilege and pleasure to be part of the commissioning this fantastic new building and I extend my heartfelt congratulations to the Ministry of Transport and to Ghana Airports Company Limited for the remarkable achievement that we're celebrating today. The Nana Ajemang Prempe the first international airport is designed and built to world-class standards as we've heard and we look forward to seeing the socio-economic benefits that it will bring to the people of this region and to the wider country. With a projected annual passenger volume of one million people, this airport is poised to generate substantial commercial opportunities and to foster the growth of the tourism industry for the people of Asantiman and Ghana. The city of Kumasi has been a renowned commercial hub for centuries and it is now directly connected to the rest of the world. I hope to see businesses and tourists taking advantage of this new route and look forward to seeing the economic dividend that that will create. I would like to congratulate Contractor UK for the successful completion of this project, undertaken with support from the UK government through UK Export Finance. With over 1,200 jobs created by this project, it showcases the positive impact of the UK government's commitment to supporting Ghana's economic growth. The friends, International Airports, straight in Kumasi, well, thank you so much. Time to express our gratitude to every individual involved in the realization of this magnificent edifice. We are talking about the engineers, the architects, the construction workers, the government officials, the airport community who have dedicated their time, resources, and expertise to make this edifice a wonderful one. Now, at this point, I'd like to invite the Honorable Minister of Transports. Honorable Ufori Asiyama to give us a short remark. A big round of applause. He's been working so hard. This is just one of them. Your Excellency, Nanaru Danko Ufori, the President of Ghana. Your Excellency, the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago. Mr. Kurt Christopherari and the First Lady of Trinidad and Tobago, His Royal Majesty, the Tomb Four, Seto to the Second, Asantehine, the Chairman of the Council of State, the Asirah Uchiu Srebo, Gabihin, Her Excellency the High Commissioner of the United Kingdom to Ghana, Ms. Harriet Thompson, the Honorable Ashanti Regional Minister, Mr. Samuel Osemenster, Honorable Ministers of State, Deputy Ministers of State, Honorable Members of Parliament, the Chairman and Members of Parliamentary Select Committee on Roads and Transport, Members of the Diplomatic Corps, the Management and Staff of the Ministry of Transport, the Board, Management and Staff of Ghana Airport Company Limited, the Board, Management and Staff of Ghana Civil Aviation Authority, Metropolitan, Municipal and District Chief Executives, Ananum, 
the directors of Contractor UK, the Project Consultant, ADK Consortium, religious and traditional leaders, members of the security services, captains of the industry members, of the media fraternity, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Indeed, I'm truly honored today to be here on this very important occasion for the commission of the new airport terminal, the radar system, and the control tower of Prempe the First International Airport. Ladies and gentlemen, I think a lot has been said, and if I'm permitted by His Excellency, I should say thank you all of you and take my seat. But before I do so, to be bad on my part, if I do not thank His Excellency the President, not only for his presence, but I can tell you that the difficulty he went through during the COVID period, when we had some challenges concerning our finances, to make sure that the finance minister, my good self, should find money to complete this superb edifice. Your Excellency, thank you very much, and may God continue to bless you. To his, to his Royal Majesty, I'm sure during this difficult period, I was sent to him several times by His Excellency the President to consult him. And any time I came to him and he saw my demeanor, he said, I know what you are going through, but I know you can do it. But of all, may God continue to bless you as you celebrate 25 years of your instrument as a king of the great kingdom of Ashanti. Ladies and gentlemen, to my predecessors, Honorable Sia and the late Kufiada for the role they played during the attempt that this project started. But I think, Mr. President, I can also thank myself for seeing through that this project has come to fruition. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Kumasi Airport, as many of you may be aware, has been in existence for a little over 80 years. Until the 90s, it operated as a military airport serving the British Royal Army during the World War II and was later upgraded to support domestic operations. Since then, the airport has undergone several rehabilitations and upgrades with a view to position it as an alternative to the Kotoka International Airport to drive socio-economic growth and development. In pursuit of this development objective, a phase development approach was adopted to ensure passenger safety and comfort while ensuring that Kumasi had a fully functional international airport. The first phase consisted of a rehabilitation of the runway and installation of airfoot light and aeronautic ground light to facilitate nighttime operations at the airport. Following this, His Excellency the President of Ufado, in October 2018, performed the groundbreaking work for the second and third phase involving the construction of a new passenger terminal and a rated facility to handle about 1 million passengers, as well as the extension of existing runway to enable the airport to accommodate wide body aircraft such as Boeing 737-800, among other aviation related facilities. This development undoubtedly will cater for the ever changing aviation industry and provide an much experience for all airline passengers. The expanded airport with state of the art facilities will transform the very concept of comfort and convenience. The present, the construction is still ongoing, and the reason why we are commissioning this terminal is to enable us, after two months, to move in here so that to give us the opportunity to break part of the old terminal and the old VIP, which is part of the extension of the runway and also the apron. Now, 
Because aviation industry is present in showing resilience and consistent growth as a result of government continual support for the sector. As I speak, both domestic and international passenger numbers have shown strong growth potentials with domestic passenger numbers exceeding pro-COVID-19 condition at 23.4% as the year ending 2023. This is indeed a historic performance which underscores the strong government support that our air transport sector enjoys. The airport ultimately will be the gateway that will serve as a driver for economic development, strengthen international relationship and inspire all who come into contact with us. Much as government worked to create a vibrant aviation industry, it is also important that we take steps to urgently address the gripping challenges including encroachment on airport land. It is an issue that threatens future expansion if not immediately addressed. Therefore, I wish to take this opportunity to urge the Ghana Airport Company Limited and the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority to collaborate closely with the Lands Commission to properly secure and protect airport lands. It is also important that the operations of the airport is in accordance with the archival standards and recommended practices. We must all do what we can to ensure that the investment that has gone into this project does not go waste for the people of this country. The Ministry on its part, Mr. President, will continue to pursue strategies to make Ghana's aviation hub within the West African region and beyond. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, I would like to acknowledge the collective effort and commitment of all stakeholders and organizations involved in this project. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to the engineers and architects who designed this magnificent structure, the contractor, the contractor UK, and the consultant ADK Consortium, who have brought this surface to me. I'm 
Amen. 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 Confess the free baby. A man about two for many kind of baby moon. And the former minister, no, and the current minister, no, my own family, almost all my idea, the poor Mabaso. No, your fast one, airport, ye, we do for me, that was near for two in support. Me bow, Mumia, my ha, was a cop, I didn't obey it. Connect, oh, yeah. Now, maybe I try and I was saying, you man, I come back home, one grano, and the million, no, it's so. And also, she can tell me about it. I want to be in a for crime. So, so we don't know what to do. We are magicians. And also, I confess to be an actor. I try to go to school. I'm a shaman, but they want to face one. They be real. They want to be shaman. And what can you do? You know, I can't present there. I can't do for there. I can't abandon the bar. I can't go for there. I mean so. So I mean so. So I'm going to move. I'm about to run away. Mean so. I can't hear you. I'm far away. Ele dá a água. O meu pai já foi na fuga, mas eu vou lá. Ele dá a água. Ele é ruim. Me dá mais. Ele é meu chamo. Ele é meu marido. Ele é filho do. Ele dá a água. Ele é o meu amigo. Me dá mais um beijo. O honorable ministro do transporte, o honorable Kuku, se ama. Na honorable, me co, chief imamo, toma na água a passar de forma sonora. Chief Master, the next time I'm going to make it. I'm going to fly every year. The passenger there, when the program is going, I'm going to fly every prepare the first. And the Chief Imam, I'm going to fly every year. 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 Now, Your Excellencies, I would like to say a big thank you to the management of contractor who are here working day and night, the CEO of Contractor Construction Limited, UK Fabio Camara, and then the Director Contractor of Construction Limited, Marcel Rapuno, and of course the Corporate Finance Director, Contractor Renato Gerardio Di and then the Relations Institutions Relations Manager. Now to speak for, and on behalf of His Majesty Otunfo, I say it to the second Asante Hine, the system occupant of the Golden Stool, is the chairman of the Council of States. He's also the chairman of the planning committee of a 2 Civil Jubilee celebration, the Mahine of Asante Jobin. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome. Nana Otu Srebo the second. Excellency, Nana 
Adodankwa Akufuado, President of the Republic of Ghana, Your Royal Majesty of Tomb 482, the Second, Excellency, the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago and Consort, Honorable Ministers of State, Honorable Members of Parliament, Nananum, MMDCEs, Boss of Airport Company and Civil Aviation Authority, Distinguished Guests, Friends of the Media, Ladies and Gentlemen, I came to this ceremony as a spectator. And when I came, I saw that on page 6, there have been uh, the list of those on the manifest to board the plane the first time out of Prepper, the first airport. And the list did not include Joseph Rebo. The list rather included my Lord and Master, Utum 4, was here to do. But when the plane was taxi, the Minister for Transport came over and had it be handed over to me a boarding pass. And he said, Utum 4 has mandated and directed and commanded that we board the plane on his behalf. And I, even though I, I protested that I didn't bring my luggage, he said, Utum 4 said that if he had only a cloth on, go on board. So I see myself here boarding the plane without any, any luggage for, to support my departure. However, that notwithstanding, let us look at this ceremony within the historical context. This year marks three seminar events in the Ashanti, in Ashanti history. In February, we celebrated 100 years of the Sagranti War, which was not a very happy relationship with the British. Since it was that time that the British came over, pillaged and looted our regalia, and then took them away. But then, 100 years later, the British have given us money to construct this airport. How history can turn, and how circumstances can move for the betterment of people. If you had been so adamant that because of what happened in 1874, we wouldn't take their, their 150 years old, we wouldn't take their largesse. We wouldn't have had this difference. Madam High Commissioner, we thank you very much for giving us the benefit. But don't bring her back sovereignty. We don't want to remember it. Again, it's a seminar in the sense that the airport is being named after is being named after King Prempa the First. And those of you with a little bit of knowledge about history will recall that from on 24th November it will be exactly 100 years when King Prempe was repatriated from the Seychelles back to Kumasi. So the naming of this airport after King Prempe the first goes to signify or gives a lasting memento of the 100 years anniversary of the return of Tumfo Ben Prempe, or Tumfo Ben Prempe the first. Now he's the man of progress and development. He's a promise keeper the Commander-in-Chief of the Ghana Armed Forces, the President of the Republic, Nana Anodankwa Akufu Ado. Regional Minister, Minister for Transport, Ministers and Deputy Ministers of State, Members of Parliament, the Metropolitan Chief Executive for Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly, and other Municipal and District Chief Executives, Chairpersons and Members of the Board, the Managing Director, Management and Staff of the Ghana Airports Company Limited, Director General, Management and Staff of the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority, High Commissioner of the United Kingdom to the Republic of Ghana, and members of the Diplomatic Corps. 
representative of the United Kingdom Export Financing Company, directors of Contractor UK, Project Consultants ADK Consortium, residents of Kumasi, fellow Ghanaians, ladies and gentlemen. It's always good to come to Kumasi, the vibrant capital of the Ashanti region. Today marks a significant milestone in the development of our nation as we gather here to commission the newly remodeled Kumasi International Airport, which I have proudly named Prempet the First International Airport Kumasi. This ceremony is further testament to the commitment of the Akufuado government to enhancing our infrastructure to meet the growing demands of our people and to positioning Ghana as a symbol of progress and prosperity on the African continent. The commissioning of this airport is taking place on the occasion of the 25th anniversary celebration of the installment of the 2482 II as a Santa This conversion of events is not a coincidence. It is a fitting tribute to the rich cultural heritage and historic legacy of the Asante Kingdom. As we celebrate the progress and modernization of our infrastructure, we also pay homage to the traditional leadership that has been instrumental in shaping the identity and character of our nation. The naming of this airport in honor of the two Fuajima Prempe the first, and the commissioning coinciding with this auspicious anniversary milestone, underscore the deep respect and reverence my government holds for our traditional institutions. The transformation of Kumasi Airport into Prempet the First International Airport Kumasi represents more than just bricks and mortar. It embodies the spirit of innovation, excellence, and collaboration that defines the Ghanaian people. Through meticulous planning, hard work, and dedication, we've turned the vision into reality, and today we reap the fruits of our labor. The decision I made to name Kumasi International Airport after the 14th Asante was not a difficult one to make. All followers and lovers of history will agree with me that Otufu Ajiman Prempe the first played a pivotal role in the consolidation of the Ashanti Kingdom during his reign in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. During his reign, he faced significant challenges, including colonial encroachment and internal strife. But his leadership and vision were instrumental in shaping the destiny of the Ashanti native people. One of Utu Fuajima Prempe's most notable achievements was his efforts to modernize and centralize the administration of the Ashanti kingdom. He introduced reforms to the traditional governing structures, establishing a more centralized system of authority that strengthened the power of the Asante and his Council of Chiefs. This helped to streamline governance and enhance the kingdom's ability to respond to external threats and internal challenges. Under his leadership, the kingdom experienced periods of territorial expansion, bringing more communities and territories under Ashanti rule and influence. Overall, the two Fuatiman Prempers, the first leadership, during a tumultuous period in Ashanti history, helped to reinforce the foundations of the resilience and endurance of the Ashanti kingdom. It also marked a period of Ashanti resistance led by him and that most redoubtable of all women, the celebrated Ejusu Hima, Yasantua, to British colonial annexation of Ashanti. 
rising tensions between the Ashantis and the British culminated in the Sangrenti War, which was won by the British and led to two Fuajiman Prentice arrest and subsequent exile. Before his forced exile to Sierra Leone, and then ultimately to the Seychelles, Utufu Ajima Prempe's last place of abode in Kumasi was on premises on which this very airport is built. Indeed, my charge to the Ghana Airport Company Limited is to ensure that the premises are preserved as a historic site. Prempe the first is revered.